Hi guys and welcome to GMBN Tech. This week we're going to talk about tips for working in your front room. So each of the presenters is going to chime in with their two cents as we find out the tips and tricks, the do's and don'ts for working on your bike in your living room. So I'll kick things off. Now in these weeks of lockdown, I've actually been using my living room as a set on multiple occasions. So a couple of do's and don'ts, some I've known previously, some I've learnt along the way. The big one for me is actually wheels. Bringing a dirty bike into the house, you'd be amazed how much mud you can get on the walls, on the ceiling. So if you've got your bike and it is still wet, which isn't ideal, the last thing you want to be doing, even if you have the floor protected, is spinning that wheel up because a lot of that mud and debris is gonna end up on the ceiling. So for that reason, I'll always try and work on my bike when it's reasonably dry. Now, the floor is often best protected with some hardware mat. So I've had to have some relatively cheap kind of foam setup that's very quick to put up, very quick to take down. And yeah, it just protects the floor. But I also use a run of tarpaulin that I've kind of cut the shape of my hallway to get the bikes into the living room. It's a bit of a weird shape. It used to go in and round to the left into the spare bedroom where I used to store my bikes before I had secure a lockup available. But now it comes all the way into the living room. If you do get, you know, mud on your carpet, dirt on your carpet, in the past I've used such home remedies as shaving foam and toothpaste and I've had reasonable amounts of success in both, just kind of rubbing it into the carpet to remove any stains. Now one of the ways that stains on bikes, you know, it's obviously it's always the grit and the grime and the dirt and a culprit of that can sometimes be what type of lubricant you use on your chain. So a wet loop is very, very good and it's hard wearing and it's very resistant to the elements. However, if you've ever seen a gunked up chain, it's either because they've over applied it or it's just been a really hard day's riding. So wet loop is great, but to be honest, for most situations, even in the winter, I tend to stick to dry loop. If I'm going out for hours and hours and hours, or it's torrential, then yeah, I'll go for the wet. But normally I would just stick with the dry. The last thing I'm gonna say, and it is gonna be something of a theme here, is damaging the walls. So I've actually got one thick woolen old walking sock, which comes out and I'll always stick it over the end of the grip, just to stop any kind of abrasions happening on these white walls. My last tip, and it is very important to me, is even though I don't necessarily have a bike stand, I do often like to have some sort of workbench. Now you can get ones like this, which are specific for bikes. You can, you can put all your Allen keys in here, various aerosols, or in this case, some water, but I want something, even if it is just a fold out table. I've even used old bike boxes in the past. It just stops things getting lost or having to put things on the floor, which I'm not really a fan of. So a table like this helps no end. And dare I say it, I think for a lot of jobs, it's more important to me than a bike stand. If you can get the bike clean at the trail, it's always worth doing, but sometimes it's just not possible. A good thing to do if you don't have any pressurized water available to you is just using the old water bottle trick. And you'd be surprised at how much muck you can get off your frame using that alone. But that's enough from me. Those are my tips and tricks. On to you, Neil. Maintenance tips for indoors. Well, back when I was a youth, uh, sort of 15 years old, I was just getting into mountain biking, super keen about everything. Uh, we moved into a house that needed loads of renovation. So my room wasn't quite so tidy. So my parents let me just keep my bike in my room. I didn't have a garage either at the time. So I would make sure obviously my bike was kind of clean, but Whilst I don't really have any specific tips for you know, looking after your bike indoors, what I will say is that I would really spend a lot of time just looking at my bike in really good detail. So I get my rag out and just clean in between the spokes and my rims, clean the spokes, clean absolutely everything on my bike and just spend loads of time you know, with the TV on, my music playing and just you know, looking at my bike in absolutely tiny little details. And what I would say about that is it's really great to learn how your bike works, but also keep a really good eye on things like you know, your spoke tension, see if you've got any little cracks on your rims or in your tires, or if your bike needs any work. So no real specific tips, other than it's a great opportunity to have a really good look over your bike. 
One piece of advice is also, this is back in the day, so this is when shocks weren't so good. I remember I'd blow my rear shocks. It was a Fox Vanilla something or other. This is probably late 90s and I was playing around with it in my room and it just exploded. Literally the, you know, the, what do you call it? That shock bit, my shock split into two and it did it at such force that the oil just went everywhere. I didn't even get a chance to close my eyes. I thought I'd gone blind for a second. My oil just covered my eyeballs. And once I sorted myself out, basically the whole inside my bedroom was covered in a thin layer of oil, except for a shadow where I was stood behind me, it was fine. Rest of the room, bit oily. Uh, so maybe my tip is to maybe not fiddle around with things like your fork or your shock in your bedroom. Hey guys, over the years I've brought my bike indoors to maintain it, even to wash my bike. Now mum and dad hated it when I used to live there and I did it in the flat and the wife didn't like that. But now I've moved on. But when I was a slopestyle rider and it, the competition got a bit wet and I needed to have a clean bike for the finals for the next day, I would just sneak it into the hotel room and give it a good old sprinkle in the shower or the bathtub, just like this. Yes, now I wouldn't, I, you know, that's the last resource, but I wouldn't recommend doing it at your house unless you really want to. But I've done a video on how to build your own wash station, if you've got room, so check that out. Maintenance tips for indoors then. I've got a few for you, some learnt from my uni days, keeping my bike in my room and some from racing and traveling. The one that's stuck in my mind the most is though, I'd had a tough day's racing. I hadn't done too good, unfortunately. I was in a bit of a bad mood. Cleaned the bikes up. We got back to the Airbnb, put the bike in the room and sort of a little bit too heavily handedly lent it against the wall and yeah, straight through the plasterboard. Big old hole and unfortunately, well, needless to say, we didn't get our security deposit back for that one. So my tip here would be, if you're gonna be leaning lots of bikes or at least one bike in your room, wherever you're staying, just uh, maybe put something like a rag over the end or a knee pad or something. Just protect the walls because uh, you don't want any unfortunate accidents. Like the rest of the GMBN team, I too have spent many years living in flats and places where I've just had no room to uh, store bikes and work on bikes. So I've ended up doing it in the front room pretty much. So here's a few little tips I've picked up along the way to uh, not only enable you to work on your bike, but to uh, stop you getting in trouble as well. Now my first couple of tips are actually based around where you store your bike. Now if you live in a block of flats or something like that, you might be able to store it in a communal hallway, but I've always ended up putting mine in the front room. For obvious choice, it's been the biggest room in the house. Now don't be tempted to lean your bike directly up against the wall. You're gonna get marks on it from the rubber of the tires, and there's a good chance it can slide down the wall, which means you're gonna get a rubber mark on the wall, and potentially worse, I think Rich has something to do with that. Now, what I found is lean up the back end of the bike. The rear dropout on your disc rotor side is much better to lean against stuff than your derailleur side because of the fact you've got drivetrain here, so there's more chance of mess getting on stuff. So use that to store your bike up against things. Now, I've got a cool little hack to basically turn your back brake lever into a handbrake. So it just gives an extra element of security so your bike's not gonna slide around or hopefully not slide around. There's two ways of doing this. You can either use a toe clip strap to literally secure the brake lever to the bar so it's not going anywhere. Or an even better one that I've found is actually use an old sock. Now it's gotta be quite a tight sock for it to work. You put the sock basically over the end of your handlebar and straight over the brake lever as well. You might need to roll the sock up a bit just to give enough tension on the brake lever. But essentially it gives you a nice soft ending for your handlebar against the wall or whatever it is you're leaning your bike against. And it also stops the brake lever moving. So your bike really is not gonna have the chance to sort of slide away and slide down the wall. It's definitely saved my bacon a few times. Okay, the next tip might be stately obvious, but uh, look after your carpet and your soft furnishings. Uh, it's probably equally as important whether you own the place or if you're renting, because it's gonna cost you if you ruin it. And that is quite likely with the condition of bikes that they can get into. This one's obviously pretty clean at the moment, but typically my bikes will have mud and muck and animal dung and all sorts of stuff dripping off them and flaking off them. And you do not want that where you live. So get yourself some carpet off cuts or something like that, or something dedicated like a bike mat, like this one from Muckoff. Now I've actually had this one probably about five years, I reckon, uh, long before we were working with Muckoff, in fact. And uh, I used to live in the hallway of my old flat. When I used to come in from work with my bike dripping with 
basically dripping with rain and moisture from the commute, I put the bike straight on that to drip dry. And uh, when the bike was clean, I'd then put it elsewhere and store it and hang it up. And then I could literally just take the mat and shake it out the front door and get it ready for the next day. Um, this has saved me a number of times in various properties actually because of that exact thing. And it's also great because you know it's waterproof so you can also look after your transmission stuff indoors. You don't have to be outside in the rain working on stuff. But it also leads me to something else. Because when you do get grease and oil on your carpet, no matter what precautions you take, it's gonna happen. This brake cleaner can help get it out. This stuff breaks down the grease really well. You don't want to leave it on too long and you want to use a nice porous cloth. A bit of an old towel or flannel is ideal for that. Spray it directly onto the flannel, not directly onto the floor, and you can pull it straight out of the carpet. You think the carpet fibers are often like nylene and polypropylene and plastic based and this stuff really does pull it away from it. But of course, do a tester patch first if you're going to do this at home. Um, and if it goes wrong, well, I'm sorry, but it's always worked for me. And there we have it. Those are the GMBN tips and tricks for keeping harmony in the household with the bike and the living room sharing the same space. Thank you very much for watching. Now, undoubtedly, we have missed loads. So let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, and if you would consider subscribing to the channel, that would be just swell. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.